how do we draw a scene where there is a lot of overlapping detail in the subjects that we have to draw? And when I say a lot of overlapping detail, I mean a lot of overlapping detail, such as in this scene. Now, often this is the predicament we find ourselves in when we have a lot of um, a lot of bare branches, a lot of trees that have lost their leaves for, for autumn. But it can be simply a lot of other things, particularly at, say, ground level in a very busy streetscape. And I think the temptation is to go one of two ways. One is, is that we simply oversimplify it when the immensity of the clutter effect visually is actually part of what attracts us to the scene. So it's a shame then to lessen that by reducing it. Um, I think the other, the other mistake made is simply to, especially for branches, just draw all the lines all over each other as if somehow in life they were all transparent and we could see through them all without any loss of definition. And either one is going to create a very different effect to the one that we're looking at. And that's what this is all about. It's about capturing the effect of all of the overlapping detail. Now, if you look at the bare branches I've drawn on the left, I drew those first because they're actually the closest things to us. And my principle always is determine carefully before you start to draw what's closest and draw that before you draw the things behind. And you can see me doing the same thing now with that uh, small sort of um, creeper um, plant along the bottom of the fence and the edge of the, the gate. Now, if you look at those branches I've already drawn, you'll see that I, I carefully drew some of them first and even made them a bit thicker. And then I made sure that the next branches I drew over them actually went behind and I didn't carry the lines in a lot of cases through it. Now, I'm not going to maintain that for all of these branches because I'm going to want to put way too many branches in for that to be a technique which will look reasonable. But in my experience, if I very sort of prominently with some, some more prominent branches and particularly larger ones, make them clearly in front or behind each other, that will create the effect of layering of branches. And that will help our brain to assume that all of those much finer lines that actually do just crisscross each other are layered as well, even though in fact, they're not. If you look at the top of that fence I just drew, that picket fence, it's a good example of drawing the effect of what we see, not trying to draw the detail, because each of those pickets has a sharpened end that comes to a point, a rounded point. And it would have been easy to make the mistake of trying to draw those rounded points in like a series of, of teeth, of canine teeth or something. But it would have been impossible to capture them that way because that's really how they look front on, not on this side on view. So again, I'm looking at the effect of the serrated, the jagged, the jagged tops of all of those pickets and trying to capture the effect. You'll notice with these steps, I did the foliage on the closer side to us before I actually drew the lines to define the treads and the steps because I wouldn't know where to stop them because they stop at that foliage. So I needed to put, to put that in first. And now some of the details I need to sit behind these branches. And so I do that as well. Now this took me oh, about an hour and 10 minutes to draw. It was a fiddly drawing. If we sit down to draw a scene such as this, then we really have to allow for the fact that it's going to take a bit of time unless we are happy and want to do a very simplified version. So now I'm doing these trunks that sit behind all of these branches. And this is where it does get a bit fiddly and it looks a bit messy at this point, but I'm basically establishing the fact that this trunk is behind the leaves by leaving slight gaps where the branches, even fairly thin ones, go through it. Now, later on, you'll see me actually strengthen the overall shape and actually run some lines up and down each side that do go through the branches. But generally, value-wise, we've established a bit, of, a bit of break in the trunks. And that, I think, maintains the effect of, of forward and behind. 
It's all about creating the effect visually of what we see in the photo, not the exactness. So you can see me now doing some, some more detail and I'm leaving a slight gap where the, the branches go through. In my mind as I was drawing this, I was thinking of it as creating a visual uh, separation, um, almost a, a visual uh, disturbing of what we're seeing because we're looking through a mass of small detail, a mass of small branches. And that's the effect I'm trying to capture in my drawing, that where we're looking through branches and we can see things behind, that the appearance is, is visually disturbed. It's rippled. Our straight lines, they're still straight, but they're not, they're not all joined up. And our values, there are breaks in our values where branches go through them. Now you'll notice what I'm doing here. I'm actually, in most cases now, drawing the fine twigs on the end, not where the branches come out from the trunk. And that's because if you think of it or look at the reference carefully, you'll see that the branches coming out to us that then branch into smaller and smaller branches. We see those end branches first. And therefore, they're covering to some degree the actual lower down branches, if you like, the, the part of the branch which is downstream and attaches to the trunk. And so if we're wanting to capture the closest things visually, most prominently, then they're the ones we need to draw, those finer ones where the tree is coming straight out towards us. And so I'm doing a bit of horizontal hatching to create a distinction between the tree trunk lines and space and the other space around it. If I were drawing this again, I wouldn't do that because it made it a bit more difficult to maintain the appearance, the effect of those branches in sunlight with the darker background before. And at least for those branches that go off to the left, I should have left them so that we could see them as a very, very light value, basically left as the paper with just a few little lines to make the effect not so stark, a few shadow lines for twigs that pass in front. And then I could have created the nice contrast between that dark background and the branches. As it is, when I put the darkness in, I tended to lose the, the clarity of how those branches appear. Not so important for the trunks that are in front of the church because they probably work better in a sense being darker and value wise they are darker than the, the stone wall. So now I'm just doing a few patches of value with hatching to define the darker value of the roof that's, that's darker than the sky and darker than that wall underneath and also in a similar way I'm doing these windows and again at some point um, before the end, you'll watch me just define those with some straight lines to make them look a little less broken, a little less disintegrating, but still to leave a, a visual disturbance, if you like, in how we see them. So now there are some very dark shadowed, very dark silhouetted leaves at the very base of this, which is actually a tree further along as far as I can work out. It's not any of these trees on the edge of this old churchyard. Now, I'm not sure if these are all the same type of tree. A couple of them clearly are. But at least one of them, one large one, is some sort of flowering tree that is coming into flower as the spring starts. This, this photo was taken in early spring. And so there is some blossom that we can see more so than leaf, making up the upper left side of our scene. So I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to represent that. Just having to go putting some shadows on the side of the church. Shadows, in fact, from those, those bunches of blossoms that I haven't drawn yet. Now, however I do these, these, these 
however I do these blossom bunches, I'm going just to be drawing the effect, capturing the effect. And there are lots of lots of branches, bare branches, thin bare branches in front of them. So I still want to create the effect of that. I don't want it to look as though where we have the blossoms, we, we have no branches in front. This is the sort of scene where, in my mind, I have some ideas of the techniques I'm going to use in drawing, but I don't often really know for sure until I start and get a sense of how it's working. And a number of times I stopped and looked at this and thought, okay, what does it need to happen? Do, do some parts need to be darker? At the very end, before I finished, I did go over a few larger areas with additional hatching, covering everything I'd done at that point, just to strengthen a few areas to visually lock them together to create larger areas so it didn't look quite so bitsy. But then it is going to be a bit of a bitsy scene. And as I said at the start, that was part of the appeal, that there is such a, a mass of detail, of line, of texture, of value, of shadows, of weathered surfaces, you know, between the, the, the footpath and the picket fence and the ground and the grass in the front and the weeds along the fence and the church and the roof and the trees of varying types, completely bare or with blossom, and the evergreen trees, darker ones just further back that we just get a glimpse of in the centre left there. There is a great, a great massive detail here. And so it's, it's trying to stay on top of what we're doing and keeping focus by looking at our reference fairly continuously and saying, what's in front? What can I see in front? What is it that, that is closest? But also, what's the overall effect? Where are the broader areas of light, the broader areas of very dark? Where are the mid-tones? And if I look at my drawing, do I get that same spread or pattern of, of value of lights and darks? And that's what I was really doing at the end, trying to strengthen that. And this is where I'm wishing that I hadn't darkened those branches that, that cut across when I could have had them really nice and, and white in effect and really had them snap forward, really would have brought the branches very much forward and that would have pushed the background much further away and made it feel like it was much more distant. I do a few very faint straight lines um, keeping the perspective pattern there, the perspective angles there in the, the fan shape pattern as a bit of a contrast to the more random helter skelter patterns of the branches in front. And now I'm just looking at parts that I feel feel like they need a little more work. We're pretty much done. I'll put this reference photo on my channel community page. And look, if you're feeling game, why not give it a go? It's not the easiest scene to draw. If I were drawing it again, I know I'd do a better job because, well, we learn, don't we, from what we do. I can see a few ways I could improve on this. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. A challenging drawing, but I hope some of you give it a go, or at least look at the principles and think about how would you progress this from start to finish, because that's a good way of getting a head start on a simpler version though, on a simpler scene that does have similar challenges. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, even if it's a tangle of overlapping details such as this, Make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.